I'm worried about the preservation of quality and investigative reporting in the face of the current transition from print to online. I'm worried because I've questioned the capacity of online revenue to pay for projects that take months or sometimes years to do. Entirely doubtful that any of the for-profit models, paywalls, subscriptions, whatever, will enhance the level of quality journalism in Australia. Does anyone here believe it will? It worries me that people looking at future models rarely talk about quality journalism at a time when spin and distortion are worse than ever and the need for unhurried, well-researched and relevant journalism is needed more than ever. I believe having an investigative watchdog news media is in the public interest. So my talk really is about how to preserve the best elements of the old model at a time when media companies are looking at ways of cutting costs and PR is winning. PR is winning, no doubt about that. We give money all the time as Australians to victims of disasters. We're good at it. We pat ourselves on the shoulder. But would we give money to enhance scrutiny of government and its agencies? Would we donate to free speech causes? Do we donate to enhance democracy in this country? Would we donate the way the Americans and others do to non-profit investigative centres that hold the powerful to account? To centres that aggressively scrutinise government agencies, probe systemic problems, issues in health, education, welfare systems, and that expose corruption? I'd like to think so, but I'm not sure. I asked uh, on Twitter this morning whether uh, we need someone like Herb, Herbert Sandler. For those of you who don't know, he's an American uh, former banker, a billionaire, who sold his bank to a bigger bank. He now gives ProPublica $10 million a year and is committed to do so for three years. It's $30 million US dollars just to do investigative journalism. I was at a conference in Lillehammer, nice place for a conference up in Norway, investigative conference. And one of my mates, Dave Kaplan, who studied um, non-profit centres globally, uh, was up on stage talking. Other than the US, there were centres doing investigative journalism, teaching it or funding investigative journalism in Sweden and Denmark, as well as an amazingly brave centre in the Philippines. Then there was a centre in Armenia, Mexico, Romania, Brazil, with a thousand members, Peru, Venezuela, Africa and Chile, and Canada. And I remember sitting there thinking, eh, what's the matter with Australia? What's happening? Why are these centres being set up globally? Was well, there something wrong or something different happening in Australia? Well, I guess we've got the ABC, does a lot of investigative journalism, publicly funded, non-profit. In Sydney, we've got connected to UTS, the uh, Centre for Independent Journalism, and here Meg and um, Melissa Sweet have recently established the um, Public Interest Foundation, Public Interest Journalism Foundation, and Newcom News, which is great. I'm involved with that, and uh, I wish it all the best. Not necessarily an outfit, however, that's going to do lengthy, expensive investigations. Well, I hope. They do some. Anyway, Kaplan, my friend, continued up in Lillehammer. There was a forum for African investigative reporters in the London-based Centre for Investigative Journalism, and then one in the Balkans as well. The Middle East, Germany, Bulgaria, Colombia, Nigeria, Siberia. Not Siberia, Serbia. <laughs> Close. Uh, a total of 43 centres established. Two years later, which was earlier this year, uh, at the next meeting of the Global Investigative Journalist Conference in Geneva, Norway to Geneva, not bad, Kaplan delivered much the same speech but added several investigative centres attached to universities. The Schuster Centre at Brande University, Seville Centre at Columbia, Investigative Workshop at American University. I haven't explored this fully, 
But what I think we need to do, and maybe some independents floating around might look at this, is try to convince the government to introduce tax deductibility or centres such as this, because I think um, I take whatever my colleagues here said, um, I, I think both the Australian, the Age, Fairfax and News do do investigative journalism. I'm not, I'm not deriding the work that they do at all, uh, but I think the more of these centres or centres that are established that do this type of work, sometimes in collaboration with mainstream media, the healthier our democracy.